Good morning. My name is Lisa and I'm the naturalist here at John James Audubon State Park in Henderson. And today's Wild Wednesday, which means every Wednesday I'm going to try and post a short video clip to help us learn a little bit more about nature. Today I'm out here in our nature preserve forest to look at some of our early spring wildflowers. Usually the first flowers that appear in the forest are called ephemerals. And what that word means is something that is here for a very short time. And that is exactly what happens with these plants. They emerge from the ground, grow to their full height, flower, make seeds, and disappear. We don't see them again until the following spring. Now, they still live in the ground, and some of them are actually very long-lived plants. They might actually be as old as some of the trees in the forest, but they only emerge for that very short time in the early spring. Now, why is early spring so important for these wildflowers? Why are they not appearing later in the summer? Well, it has to do with the canopy of our forest. The tall trees uh, produce all their leaves and create an umbrella over the top of the woods. This umbrella then uh, provides shade to most of the forest throughout the growing season. So in order to get the sunlight that's needed to complete the life cycle and have enough sugars to help that plant survive through the rest of the year, these ephemerals have to make their growing fast and quick, almost like running a race to make their life cycle complete before the trees leaf out. So usually for Audubon Park, that means that early March is when we start to see our woods greening up with these ephemerals. So I'm going to turn the camera around here and we're going to look at one of them here, which is along our museum trail. This plant is a favorite of our hikers because it is such a bright green in the woods. And as it emerges from the ground, uh, we have this little clump of pinkish purple buds, which are uh, trying to um, make their growth be known. And as they mature, those blossoms then appear as these bright blue bluebells. And so that's where this wildflower gets its name as Virginia bluebells. In order to help this plant propagate, we actually have a little bit of help from some other uh, creatures in the woods. These long tubular shaped blossoms are perfectly formed in order to help the queen bumblebees feed. They have a long tongue which enables them to uh, reach down inside the blossoms. The queen bumblebee is actually the only member of the hive which overwinters and so as spring approaches and the bumblebee emerges from the ground in the den that she has been in, she seeks out these early blossoms of our ephemerals and the nectar and pollen in these flowers helps give her the energy that she will need to reinstate her colony and in the process helps the wildflower uh, pollinate and produce its seeds. After the plant has been pollinated and it begins to make its seeds, a lot of our early ephemerals create what's called an eliosome on each seed. It's a tiny fatty little appendage which makes sort of like a, a little lipid nugget if you will. And that's where another creature from our woods help these plants. Ants, as they emerge from hibernation, come to collect these little nuggets. They carry the whole seed back with them to their colony and they'll feed on the fat and then they'll take that whole seed and they'll toss it out. Kind of like putting it into their own little compost pile of garbage, if you will, that they're not going to use. But guess what? That little compost heap helps plant that seed so that our wildflowers can continue to spread. And as you look around our woods, there are small clumps of bluebells that have emerged all over the place. And so we know that those seeds are spreading. And we know that that colony of 
bluebells can keep on growing. I've moved on to another part of our woods now and we're looking at uh, one of the first ephemerals to emerge. It's called the cut leaf toothwort and um, the leaf is uh, cut into lots of small lobes and I believe it gets its name um, from the fact that if you would dig this plant up there are small projections growing along the root system which look a lot like teeth. Um, the blossoms are closed right now. We had a brief rain shower and so they kind of closed up to protect themselves. Uh, they're usually white or maybe a very pale pink in color. Uh, and then if we move over here is another one of our uh, spring flowers. It has this beautiful, very dainty leaf. And um, this one gets its name from its flower. It's called the Dutchman's Breeches. And if you think for a minute about the word breeches, we'll go back to our past. Breeches was another name for britches, which is another name for a pair of pants. And if you'll picture a clothesline and you've taken a pair of pants out to dry and you've hung a clothes pin on each leg and it's now hanging upside down on the line to dry, that's kind of uh, where this flower's name can be remembered more easily. So Dutchman's breeches. Usually about a week to a week and a half after the Dutchman's are blooming, we'll have another plant come up, which is a very close, almost look-alike, called squirrel corn. I'm going to keep my eyes out for that one. I haven't found it yet. I have found that the spring wildflowers change almost daily. New plants emerge, blossoms open, things change so quickly. It's almost like going on a treasure hunt on the trail. But keep in mind as you're out looking for wildflowers, either here at Audubon or at home in your own backyard, the reason that some of these wildflowers are able to grow where they are is because they have to have undisturbed places. So tread carefully, stick to the paths, and enjoy the spring show. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we'll do another edition of Wild Wednesday.